Halloween programming on Channel 107. So what we're talking about is we're revisiting where you used to work, North Wales Hospital, as it's generally known. And it was um, a mental asylum, if that's not too politically incorrect a term, um, located on the outskirts of Denby. Politically incorrect, obviously you are. It's not an asylum. Probably never was an asylum. No. Um, actually, it was an asylum. I have got some sort of relics from uh, around the area that says asylum, North Wales Asylum on it. Which I may give you one. Yes, aspect. because they were happy to use the word asylum at one point. You know, uh, you know, it was it was just something that you know. But whereas later on, mm. that was too crude. Well, it was the negative connotations around asylum now. Yeah, would say it's a no no word. Uh, but yeah, I, li I lived and worked there from the age of seventeen to the age of about twenty four, twenty five, when I got married. Uh, continued to work there. Um, it closed. I carried on nursing in. Colwyn Bay, and then finally the whole hospital has sort of gone into some sort of um, degenerative state, and there's no hope yeah. for the building anymore. Yes, yeah, to this day. I mean, it's not like it's being redeveloped or anything. It's just simply left there, and it's a favourite uh, spot for urban explorers. That's a that's a recent phenomenon. Actually, breaking into buildings, if you like, not not like a burglar, but sort of slipping in with state of the art cameras to mm -hmm. to catalogue the decay and explore almost like it was a, a level off a game. It's one of those buildings that, that is targeted in that way. And also Most Haunted uh, showed an interest in that, that programme that used to be on Living TV. It's been um, given a, a new lease of life on Really, so it's been brought back from the dead by itself. <laughs> and it featured Dem, uh, Denby's, um, Denby Hospital there and um, then a mysterious fire also broke out. Uh, Seemingly just after that programme, wasn't it? Uh, used, used the building. Well, what's interesting, yes, you're quite right, it is it's really resurrected, has resurrected itself now. What I'm looking at is probably 2000, well, I can't remember the, the year, but Most Haunted Village of the Damned created a huge uproar in the town. I think it was 2008. 2008, well, it really. Could have been, anyway. Yeah. Might have been nine, probably eight. Yeah. Um, that was the last time I was in the building. The main hall was in a good state, otherwise health and safety would have closed it down. There's no way cameras and shows for five days a week are going on in that building, unless health and safety has ticked every box. Yeah, because if a single tile or something, or a little bit of plaster falls on someone's head, it's kind of game over, isn't it? It is, really. Um, you have to go on with, in with a hard hat. And can you imagine Derek Acker in a hard hat? Well, maybe. <laughs> Derek Acker, or whatever he's Derek pronounced. Derek Acker, he wasn't in it at the time. No, he wasn't, no. Uh, I he think he was, his... yeah, he was discredited because he'd made up um, the names of people to be possessed by, really? which was quite interesting. He was caught out when, the, when I think the production team got suspicious and fed him a name, started talking casually about it, and, and then he started to talk less than casually about it in the yeah. show, getting possessed. Yeah, oh um, so, Nice yeah. man, good yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, next thing, most haunted leave the whole hall, which had deemed the place to be habitable and usable, uh, was set on fire, um, and since that time the whole hospital has just crumbled to basically just the front piece which is, is remaining at the moment, and that's what they're trying to preserve at the minute. But as for the rest of the stuff, windows gone, everything gone. Right, so don't were, go near there. So you 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 worked there for don't quite. Go near there. Yes, exactly. No, <laughs> not anymore. Anyway, although well, some will, of course, yeah. do that oh, inevitably. Uh, there's more people in the hospital at two o'clock in the in the morning. Then there are on town at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yes. So there's lots of stories there. So we're just going to that you had, you know, incidents that you would say that can't really be explained in a normal way, which is what this is all about. And this story, um, let's see, it's kind of the headline title is The Puzzle. The Puzzle. Oh, yeah. Um, now, I did that. I started to do uh, ghost stories from the North Wales Hospital. And put them on YouTube, and they became fairly popular. I wouldn't say massively popular, but people would certainly known in Denby because well, if you, yeah. you start doing things in your town, you do get known. You do. And when I first went on YouTube, there was nothing about Denby on YouTube at all, and um, YouTube was fairly new, and no one in Denby would dare stand in front of a camera <laughs> and film themselves. I didn't mind doing that, um, and I started putting up ghost stories, and the puzzle is actually a story that was related to me from an old staff nurse uh, back in 1980 when I was on night duty. It concerned a man called 
uh, Meredith Gowan. Meredith Gowan, who lived... I think he was originally from Welshpool. He was originally from Welshpool. And he lived in a nurse's home, which in those days was inside the main hospital. The um, nurse's home was not used as a nurse's home at that time, as we see it today. Um, And... I remember at night I was I was I think I was uh, relieving somebody for a break on the female side and this female nurse would would stay with me and then the other one would go for a, her you know they'd take in turns to go for a break two members of staff I'd sit with one the other would go uh, then the other one comes back and the other one goes so while I was sat with this nurse she would tell me about spooky goings on and things that she'd heard um, and we had a good old time about that it was middle of the night and nice and atmospheric so I remember this story and it it talks of this Meredith Gowan who was from Welshpool originally and what happened was he woke up one night a scratching on his window and he heard the scratching and he saw is that a tree branch and he looked out of his window and there's no trees around but he heard this scratching he got back in bed and it was scratching and scratching again. What is that? When he went to the window, it stopped. Oh. Oh. Anyway, tossing and turning all night, eventually a fitful sleep. Woke up in the morning to go to work. There's a parcel outside his door. A small, square parcel. Mm-hmm. So he picks up the parcel, puts it on his dressing table and says to himself, I'll sort that in the morning when I get back. Mm, it looked like it had been posted that's interesting no nothing on it no. his name that is all no address his name just his name that, that i think that's that would be fairly spooky wouldn't it mm. as you know what you you know what it's like through the post we all get them now we do usually spam um and bills so he goes to work in the day comes back in the evening decides to open his parcel when he opened the parcel there was a box a small box He opened the lid, and there was a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle. Hmm, he's not one for jigsaws, don't fancy that, but who is it from? He looked all over to see if there's any signs of um, who it could be from, a gift maybe, or maybe a a symbol of affection from somebody. Uh, But there was nothing to be seen to identify where that box, where that puzzle had come from. It had been a long day, a tiring shift, so he clambered into bed and he tried to sleep. Mm. And sleep he did from 10 till 1 when suddenly I am. the scratching on the window. What is that? Out of bed. There's no twigs, there's no tree rubbing against the window. He's looking out, there's nothing there. Oh, gets back to bed. Oh, I can't sleep. What is the point? So he wanders over to his dressing table and he, he empties the box of all these jigsaw pieces and he starts to put the jigsaw together. Yeah, he doesn't dare go outside and have a look to see what might be there. Maybe it's his imagination. Maybe there was some beast there. Yeah. Maybe there was some entity there. Maybe some demon or devil or mental patient or nurse or someone goofing around. Uh, He's severely pissed off and he starts to do this jigsaw and it starts to form shapes. And after an hour, he thinks, oh, I've done enough of that. I'll go back to bed. And he slept for the rest of the night. Got up in the morning, went to work, came back in the evening, looked at his jigsaw, Mm. Maybe I'll do a bit more. Nah, I'm not into jigsaws. Went to bed. Mm. One o'clock in the morning. Oh, the scratchy scratch of the unknown. It's the fear, isn't it? It's not knowing. That's what gnaws at your bones. That's the chill that goes up and down your spine. It's the not knowing. So he got up and he looked out the window. <clears throat> and as soon as he went to the window, it had stopped. So he sat down by the dressing table and did some more. And it, and suddenly the shape started to appear. It seemed to be a man. A man with no head at the moment, because it was just the shoulders and the body and the legs, seemed to be floating. 
in the air. Hmm, fascinating. So he did a little bit more, but then he, he had another shift in the day. So he had to go to bed. Um, and clambered back into bed and put the sheets and blankets over his head in case of which didn't repeat and he slept until he was welcome for his shift the next day another long shift another dangerous shift at the North House Hospital on the lockup ward and he comes back having had his evening meal uh, back to his room and it was basically bed and work six days a week these people were not nurses as such they were keepers mm -hmm. um, so he's in bed 10 to 1 all is quiet one o'clock, dong, the bell sounded one o'clock. Uh-uh, it's back. They're scratching at the window. Goes to the window, usual pattern. Decides, I'll finish the jigsaw. Finish round the edges. Starting to build up around the edges. Hmm, that's interesting started to build up the face started to build up the top oh there seemed to be some sort of oh, actually the guy is not floating in the middle of the air oh my lord a rope appeared as he pressed the pieces in it showed a man his body only as if hung from a rope well, that, that's a spooky image to have to put together. I mean, when you think, you know, it's been delivered into the door, and now this is what we see in front of us. Mm. There were five pieces left, the five pieces that made up the rest of the jigsaw. Oh, I'll finish it. I'll finish it tonight. Because he knows what's going to happen. Click. He knows what's going to happen the next night. Click. Jigsaw, piece three. Click. Jigsaw piece four. Final piece. Click into place. Meredith Gavin gazed down at the face of the hangman and saw his own face. Two days later, the superintendent of the nurse's home entered the door of his room with a key, with a pass key, and found Meredith Gowan hung. Hung from the rafter. There was no sign of the jigsaw. Sometimes, if you wander around the North House Hospital at night, say you hear the dong of one o'clock, dong. Sometimes in a certain place you can hear this. <laughs> <laughs>